Good morning. Sorry for the farmers here with all the water logging. You can see how the crop is damaged. Here the growth is affected. So we're just here north of Magdala. Uh, you have a different view today. We're here at this traffic circle across from Migdal. Any Migdal lovers here? I know somebody in Germany, Wilfried, who bakes so many wonderful cakes for us when he is here. Chocolate cakes and strawberry cakes and so many uh, different ones for us, for the volunteers. Always brings a gift. And here we have Mount Arbel from a different angle and Harnitai. And you can see the crops, how lush they are growing. This is the plain of Ginosar. Lake Genezareth. You can, have, you can see the Sea of Galilee from here as well. Just a little bit through the trees. I came up here because there's not much chance of a sun disk and the beauty of that moment every morning. So you can enjoy the growth here, the new crops coming after all the hard work of the farmers and the abundance of growth. Just like if the builder is building the house and the Lord is not building with him, it won't be built. And if the guard is watching the city, in vain do the watchmen keep vigil. Hey, look at the reflection here in that, in that, in that pool. You can see the Mount Arbel reflected here. Here all the traffic, all the people going to work, to serve people, to provide for their families, to provide assistance in time of need. And this is Galilee. And I remember last week we had, or two weeks ago, we had a number of readings where Jesus came from the other side over to Gennesaret. I'm going to switch sides here so these people will be happy with me and be on the footpath and then you don't have to be nervous. There's a school bus sign there and normally there wouldn't be school buses going here but also up in the neighboring hotel up here uh, you can't see it right now. It's now called Goma or Gome. And there are also displaced people there from the kibbutz on the Lebanese border. And there you can also see those mountains up there of bordering Lebanon. So let's switch over to the readings. And today there's a text that I just love so much, always it resonates in my heart so much but i got some new insights on it this morning that were given i just am thankful for these new insights god has got to thank the giver you know but the the first uh, thought is that like the primary thought that has always impressed so much is the do not turn your back on your own so isaiah is offering a critique of uh, it's a classical, socially recognized form of fasting. And give up smoking or give up cookies or whatever, you know. Uh, and there's merit in doing those things as well. But then there's this extreme form of fasting that it's mentioned here. And I say it just to make it more dramatic. And he's, uh, he's saying that's not enough. It's not enough to be lying in sackcloth and ashes. It's 
not enough to be lying in sackcloth and ashes. Because at the end of the day, what's the fruit of all the work you did? Is it going to be good fruits from your garden? Wonderful dates from the date trees there. Look at all those date trees. Is it going to be good fruits from your garden? Or is it going to be bitter, cantankerous rows in the family? Like, what's the point in having, uh, have be doing some fasting if you're going to be harping and bickering and teasing and making others cry, making others bleed, suppressing others, oppressing others, silencing others, canceling others, ignoring others. So it's always the great, the great, uh, encounter of biblical spirituality that the relationship with God is deeply connected and manifested and nourished by the relationship with others around us and the ones close to us. Do not turn your back on your own. Now if you look at the words that come before that it says to give shelter to the homeless and to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked. And that's where there were some little reflections today. That's what every family does, isn't it? Going out to work, and sometimes both parents have to go out to work. I read a line yesterday that was precious from Mother Teresa, that the greatest work you'll ever accomplish is what you do in your home. The home you build. And so providing a home, and sometimes there are headaches because there's a problem with leaking or damp walls. And I know of parents who are very concerned about dampness in the rooms of the children because it could affect their health. An old house and a leaking house, a leaking roof, and the need to, the need to repair, to provide shelter for the homeless because we're all homeless. We need a home. Somebody needs to build a home for us. And that's what happens, you know? This is what happens. Just another view of the lake down here because I know you love the lake. Maybe we'll even get a glimpse of sun. Who knows? Oops, that's me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Unintentional. Trying to zoom in and zoom out. Well, so... To feed the hungry, every child, you know, I, I see it in the families that are staying with us, you know, little children crying. They need to be cleaned. They have a toothache, they're teething. And mom and dad are there consoling the afflicted. You know, those are great lines also for social responsibility outside the home. But first of all, they're inside the home. Imagine people who are very socially conscious and active and maybe leading protests and all the other things, but at home, they might be rather difficult. Maybe they're, sometimes maybe social protest is just an escape from interior conflict at home. Go out and condemn the others who are doing obvious wrong, but kind of, to declare myself good because I'm doing something against injustice, but maybe I'm also a focal point of injustice at home. And to clothe the naked, every little child needs to be dressed by the parents and sometimes the elderly also. They can't button their shirt anymore, they can't tie their shoelaces, they might even need help shaving, they might need help washing, they might even need help going to the bathroom to clothe the naked. And then there's another version of naked, and that is very frequent in the home, and that is when our faults are discovered. We human beings have a great knack to cover up for our faults. First of all, the very dumb way of just denying them. But also the way, look at the way that's reflected there, Mount Arbel. But also the very subtle ways 
of blaming somebody else, which isn't so subtle, but it's, it can be very deceitful. And then uh, certain types of, of uh, how would you call it? Um, the word isn't coming to me. Certain types of sulking and bad mood and other things to hide other things that are worse. We are so cunning and so capable of deceit. And then on the other hand, we're so capable of highlighting and dramatizing the faults of the others and pointing them out and, and condemning them inside the family. I'm not talking about the media, I'm not talking about a vicious video done against a, a, a religious group. I saw one yesterday, very deceitful. Made me a bit annoyed, I must say, I had to go and take more time for prayer to gain, <laughs> to keep the meaning of myself. You know, uh, but it's so deceitful. People are not honest and people condemn a religious group and they haven't read the documents of that group. They haven't read the statements. They have read some media reports. Look at this wadi here. This is a real wadi in action, you know? So look at this big bridge we have here. I don't know if I can get you a glimpse of it. Probably not because I don't have enough angle. Maybe on the other side. But this is so big and you say, why is it big? Because there's no water coming out all the time. But here you have a three lane river coming out here of this bridge. And then you have lane two and then lane three. The middle one is kind of blocked up with a lot of debris, but water finds its way around the blockage. So, and this is probably even a small amount of what could come in torrential rain. And then this is dry most of the time, and it could even be dry for a few years. And now it's fully in action because of all the rain we've had. Let's go over and check it out on the other side. You don't get to see a wadi always. And sometimes the wadis can get clogged up and they cause a disaster because the water has floods over. And we've seen some of that here in Galilee this past, this winter. And this is what we're doing in Lent. We're opening up the wadis so that all the, the flow can happen in our lives. Here you can see the abundance of water coming in. This is a real wadi people, a dry riverbed. And that's where you have the name Guadalajara, and Guadalquivir, the rivers of Spain, they're influenced by the Arabic words, wadi. So we got to clean up our, our wadis. And this is the why, why we're doing the fasting and the, the praying and the kindness to get back into shape. And this is Lent. And you will have shortly the, the new video from Kathleen for today, for the pilgrimage of prayer. So thank you for all your wonderful, encouraging comments and insights from what you're experiencing, both privately sent and, and posted on the different media posts. So there's a glimpse of the Sea of Galilee again. And Jesus is encouraging us today that we are going to be fasting. We should be fasting. We have plenty of reason. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Switching over to the Instagram post now.